Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy JB with JB's Barbecue and Guns, and today we're going to be talking about how to disassemble, how to clean, and how to lubricate your AR-15. All right, now before we start, there are some things that you're going to need handy to help you along with this process. You're going to need some some gun cleaner, some solvent, and you're going to need some lubricant okay i like to use clp so for today's video we'll just be primarily using this clp because it's like a three in one so we really don't need the other one you're gonna need some some cleaning brushes a cleaning rod for attachments you're gonna need a, a boar snake you're gonna need something pointy and sharp not necessarily a knife, but something that has a, a pointy edge kind of to it. And you'll see why later on. And you're going to need your best friend, which is some Q-tips. All right, so what we have here is my 6.5 Grendel, okay? 6.5 Grendel is in the AR-15 family. So we're going to be using this today because my other one is already clean. But as always, the first thing you want to do before you mess with any firearm, whether it's cleaning or you're going out to the range or whatever you're going to do with it, is you have to inspect it to make sure that it's not loaded. So the way that we're going to do that today is we're going to press on this magazine release right here. As you can see, we have a magazine in there with some rounds in it. Then we're going to take the charging handle right here and we're going to rack it back just to make sure that we don't have a round in the chamber. Then we're gonna lock the bolt back, okay? Then we're gonna visually inspect the, the chamber and we're gonna physically inspect it and there's nothing in there. So we're all clear, now we can proceed. All right, now that we got everything inspected, everything's clear and good to go. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and start the takedown disassembly process. And how you do that, what you're gonna do is locate the rear takedown pin which is right here okay and the front pivot pin which is right here all right all right now most of the time you can just press these in but some of them fit pretty snugly and, you, and you'll have to use this this cleaning rod tool to get it out so i'm gonna go ahead and show you that i just press this uh rear takedown pin in right here and on the back side right here is where it comes out and you can just kind of pull it out like this, and this comes up like that. Now, if if you have some kind of cleaning bench or something like that, you can actually just go ahead and clean it like this, okay? But for the purpose of this video right here, we're going to take all of it off. Now, how you get the rest of it off, you're going to have to take this um, uh, front pivot pin right here and use your, well, on mine anyway, I have to use my cleaning rod to kind of, push it through just a little bit. Once you push it through, it's the same thing. Pull it through. And then your upper and your lower comes apart together, all right? All right, now the next step to this is you have to take your uh, bolt carrier group out and your charger handle from your upper, okay? So it's real easy. Just take your charger handle and pull it back and you'll take it out just like that. And we can set this to the side for later. We've got our lower part right here. And we'll worry about those later on. Okay, now we can start the disassembly of our bolt carrier system. Now, some people don't know, and they actually end up calling this whole entire thing the bolt, okay? This is the bolt carrier system, okay? This is your bolt carrier. This right here is your bolt, all right? So just get that understood. This is your bolt carrier system, your bolt and your bolt carrier, all right? But to take this apart, like I said earlier, you're going to need something sharp and pointy because the first thing you want to do, okay, is take the firing pin um, holder right out of here, this little thing right here. See that? You want to take something sharp and pointy. 
Just kind of do it like that. And if you got fingernails, you can do it just like that. But some of us don't. So you just take that out of there just like that. And just lay it to the side. Make sure you don't lose that. Now, your firing pin should just fall out just like that. That's your firing pin, okay? Now you're going to take your cam pin right here. Push your bolt up. And see how it's kind of horizontal, okay? You want to turn it 90 degrees to where now it's vertical. And you can just kind of pull it out just like this. Or you can just turn it over and it should fall out just like that. All right, see that? Put that to the side. Now you just take your bolt and take it out. Just like that. And now we have our uh, bolt carrier system all disassembled. All right, now the first thing you want to do, there's no particular order that you have to go in, but what I like to do, I like to start by just wiping everything down. I take my, my bolt carrier and I'll just wipe it down. And this one has kind of a, a nitride kind of finish. See how it kind of looks slick? And I have a, a nickel boron one, and this one is a nitride, and I do have a, a regular just phosphate uh, bolt carrier system, but that's another video. Spoiler alert. All right? But um, you just take it and you wipe it down just like this. Wipe everything down. Take your bolt, kind of wipe it down. And you can use a, a, a towel, an old T-shirt like I'm doing, or something like that. It doesn't really matter, okay? Just make sure you wipe everything down. Take your firing pin, wipe it down. Just like that. Take your cam pin and wipe it down. And don't forget your firing pin retainer, okay? All right, now what you want to do is, uh, like I said before, you're going to need some kind of solvent to start... Um, Dissolving all of the carbon buildup that's on your boat carrier system and on your boat and your firing pin and all that other stuff. So what you would normally do is take some, some gun cleaner like this and spray it all down like this. Spray everything down with it and just let it sit for maybe about five minutes or so so that it can it can get into those uh, into the metal and start breaking down that carbon. But today, like I said, I'm going to use this. CLP because I, I I love CLP because it, it, it does everything in one so as you can see it cleans it lubricates and it protects okay so you can just spray this on and we'll go ahead and do that we'll spray the outside of it let's get a good dose of it so you get on the inside and you you, you really want to get on the inside right here and this this chrome lining right here because that's where your bolt goes, and there's going to be a lot of carbon built up in there. I don't know if you all can see that, but you want to get in there. Just do a little squirt like that. Now, and what you want to do, you want to find something to kind of prop it up on like this. You know, whatever you got handy, and prop it up so everything can just drain down. Now you want to take your bolt and kind of do the same thing. Spread it down real good. You want to get your bolt face. That's the most important thing because you don't want you don't want anything to build up in your bolt face. That's for sure. Kind of find something to prop it up on. Now you can do your firing pin if you want to. You really don't have to do your firing pin because unless it's just really really dirty. Some people don't clean their AR-15s for thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds, and they have a lot of buildup especially around this area right here. They'll have a whole lot of carbon buildup, and it, it'll be just caked on. But for this one right here, I really don't have a lot of buildup, so I'll just take it, and I'll wipe it down and be done with it. And your cam pin is the same way. Um, this is actually black right here, so I can just wipe it off, and it'll be good to go. All right, now, after you let everything kind of sit, and uh, let all of that solvent and everything get in there and start breaking down that carbon. Um, what you want to do is kind of take one of these um, soft cleaning brushes right here and just kind of start scrubbing down everything to break up some of that carbon, all right? Just go ahead and, and give it a good scrub. Like I say, I, I generally keep my firearm pretty clean, so it doesn't require a whole lot of scrubbing. 
So just get on the inside like this, both sides like that. You want to hit this part right here that gets a pretty good amount of action right there. A lot of friction goes on right there. A lot of carbon builds up right there. Now, what you want to do kind of for this inside right here, I say you can take one of these cleaning cloths if you want to and get on the inside of that. But what I normally do, I just take my old t-shirt and I just kind of get in there like this and go back and forth up and down and around on the inside like this. And it kind of does a trick, you know. Just do that a few times. And that should get you good to go, just like that. Go ahead and scrub my bolt down. Now on your bolt, where you want to pay attention to, the most carbon buildup is going to be around this edge, around this uh, cylinder right here on your bolt right here. That's where the, most of your carbon buildup is going to be. So, like I say, people don't clean their ARs for a thousand and, and thousands of rounds. They'll have a heavy coat of carbon buildup right around this edge right here. So that's an area right there that you want to pay particular attention to. And mine doesn't really have that much because I keep mine pretty clean. You know, so just kind of, and like I say, you want to get this bolt face right here. You don't want anything building up in there ever because then your um, extractor won't work. Your extractor is what uh, ejects the, the bullet casings when you fire. So you want that clear. You want that functional at all times. All right? Get that and then take your cam pen. Just kind of brush it a little bit. And then what you'll do, you'll just wipe everything down. So you just, just wipe everything down, get that bolt face. Now we'll let it sit until we get ready to lubricate everything. Okay, now we want to go ahead and clean our uh, upper part of our firearm right here. This is what's considered your upper right here. This is what uh, houses your, your bolt carrier system and your charging handle. So you really want to get on the inside of here. You want to get that pretty good inside of there. You want to get your feed ramp pretty good, okay? You don't ever want that caked up. You'll see that feed ramp in there. You don't ever want that caked up. So pretty much the same thing. What I like to do, I just go ahead and squirt it down a little bit inside of there. Get the feed ramp a little bit. Let that all get in there. And normally I'll, I'll just let it sit for about five minutes, but for purposes of this video right here, I'll just show you. I'll just go ahead and scrub everything down. Mine's not terribly dirty, so it really doesn't need that much work. Just go ahead and scrub everything down on the inside. Break up some of that carbon in there. See that? Now, here's where Q-tips are your best friend. Because sometimes it's hard to get in there to get that feed ramp section right here. Even with this little brush right here. All right, but what you can do is just go in there with your Q-tip and get in them little grooves right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. See those little grooves in there? You want to get in between those little grooves and just try to get as much of that carbon out of there as you can. See that? That's why Q-tips are your best friend, all right? All right, and then what you want to do, just kind of get in there and wipe everything down, just like that. You can take your old old rag or whatever you have and just wipe everything down on the inside of there. And just kind of take a, take a brush, take your brush, and like we did before, take our old T-shirt and just kind of get on there on the inside like that, get on the sides. Wipe it down like that. Get down there in that bottom right there. All right. And with this CLP doing uh, pretty much a three-in-one, you really don't even have to, to lubricate it because it's already lubricated inside of there, all right? Now, here's the most important part right here is cleaning our barrel, okay? And I'm going to show you all how to do that. As I said before, you have to have this boar snake right here. This is all important right here. But what a lot of people don't know is 
Some boar snakes have uh, multiple sections to them. Like this one right here has kind of a, a rough looking section right here. That's where you would spray this cleaner on right here, this solvent. You'll spray this solvent on there and then run it through your your uh, barrel, okay? And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But right now, and then you have a, um, a another section back here where you spray your lubricant on after you get your solvent in there. You spray it on both sides of this part right here. But right now, we're going to go ahead and spray some solvent on this section right here. Just get it all over there like that. And what that's going to do, that's going to, when you run it through your, your uh, barrel, it's going to coat that barrel with its solvent. And its rough part is going to start breaking up that carbon as you pull it through. All right, now I just going to want to show you all how to feed this uh, boar snake through here so that we can clean our barrel. You want to take this, this brass end right here and feed it through the, the ramp until you see it come out the bottom of the, the, well, the top of the barrel right here, all right? Now, when you see that, you can just pull it on through, and you want to wrap it around, wrap it around your hand like this, okay? Now, what you want to do is just kind of pull it through. Wrap it around your hand and just pull it through, just like that. And so you want to go kind of slow. Here's that first part. Got everything in there. And boom, just like that. Now you can do that two or three times, just uh, depend on how, how dirty your barrel is, but I really don't have to do too much of it. So what I'll do now is I'll just put some lubricant on it, on both sides of this boar snake, and I'll just repeat that process. All right, now the last thing you wanna go ahead and clean is uh, your trigger system, okay? The trigger system doesn't really take, um, it doesn't really get a whole lot of carbon buildup. So some people don't, don't even do it. I rarely do it. But for this video, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it. And what you want to do, you want to take it off of safety so that your um, trigger can be pulled so that your hammer right here can uh, go forward. Now, one thing y'all need to remember is this, okay? You never want to fire your trigger and have it hit up against this little section right here, okay? Because it can it can crack it, it can it can really damage it, and that'll be and then you'll have to replace this part right here, okay? You'll have to replace your uh, bolt release, all right? So what you want to do is you want to take your finger or whatever, place it over the hammer like this. Now you want to pull that trigger and release it slowly, just like that, all right? So just remember that. But all you really want to do in here is just kind of get in here and wipe it down like this. You might take your brush and get in here a little bit and break up some of that carbon like that on there. But that's all you really have to do to your trigger system. Now, if you want to lubricate it, this is where you would lubricate it. See those springs right there? That spring right there? That spring over here and these two springs back here, okay? Those springs right there, those springs, one, two, three, and four. Those are the springs you want to lubricate, okay, because those are the springs that are for your, your, your hammer, okay, and your trigger, okay. But you don't need to douse it down. Just take a few drops of uh, oil and just kind of drop it on each spring and then work it back and forth like that, and then you'll be done with that. All right, now what you want to do is go ahead and get your bolt carrier system all uh, lubed up. Remember that AR-15s love to run wet, okay? They love to run wet, okay? So just think about it as you driving your car. Your car's engine loves to run wet, okay? So you want to lube this pretty good, okay? But where you want to lube it at, you don't have to lube this whole entire thing because not the whole entire thing engages in friction, okay? But where you want to lube it up at is in these grooves right here, all right? See those grooves right there? You want to lube it up in there. Now I try not to get a whole lot. Lube it up in there just like that, all right? 
on the sides right here, all right, on both sides, and on both sides of the um, or your gas key, okay? So we'll take that, lube it up on both sides like that. And we can just kind of let it drip off or you can wipe it off lightly or whatever you uh, want to do. I typically just let mine run off for a little bit, maybe about two or three minutes, and then I'll be done with it. But the section that you want to get some some um, some lube in is this section right here where your bolt goes, okay? This has a uh, a chrome lining, and it helps with the with the slickness and the, um, it helps the bolt slide through back and forth. Okay, so you want to have some lube in there, and you don't have to get a lot because, like I say, the the bolt is going to be going back and forth anyway. So that's a good amount right there. Now you want to go ahead and oil up. The most important of your uh, AR is going to be your bolt, okay? Absolutely, bar none, your bolt, okay? I love to have mine really lubed up, okay? Because like I said before, ARs love to run wet. Now, I typically don't put any in the bolt face because to me that's just, it doesn't need it, okay? But you want to have it oiled up pretty good. Now, one thing you might want to do, y'all might want to consider is taking a Q-tip okay and going inside of here and just going in there like that to try to get some of that carbon out of there some of that carbon build up see that it's a little bit in there because i've already done it and you all want so want to do it on your gas key all right just get in there back and forth just like that once or twice boom see that you want to keep that clear of carbon as much as you can all right so we got those all the uh, you really don't have to do the cam pin. You can if you want to. Some people do. I just take whatever's on my hand and just kind of do it like this. But you don't have to oil up the uh, firing pin at all. So we've got everything lubed down. You can even lube down your um, charging handle. It's a pretty vital part. You can lube down your charging handle. So I'll just let those sit for about... Mm, two or three minutes or so, and then we'll come back. Then we'll start putting everything together. All right. Now that we got everything lubed down, it's time to put everything back together. So the first thing you want to do is, is you want to go ahead and put your bolts back into the bolt carrier. Now, on mine, it has this, this writing right here. If y'all can see that writing right there. So I know that this is facing up. But if yours doesn't have writing, just remember the extractor which is this right here if y'all can see that the extractor this part right here is always facing at the 10 o'clock position okay and i'll show y'all how that's supposed to look so if i'm putting my bolt into my bolt carrier system right here the extractor is right here and i'm making sure that it's at the 10 o'clock position okay because if you notice when i do everything everything is lined up the hole is lined up see that and if you see your hole lined up like that and your extractor is at the 10 o'clock position, you know that you have your bolt in right. Now, I can tell you this. If you have it in the opposite direction, you'll know it because when you go to fire your firearm, your bullet casing won't extract and it won't uh, eject and it'll get stuck in there. Believe me, that happened to me once. And I couldn't figure it out for like two days until I, I actually looked at it. So... Make sure you put this in at facing at the 10 o'clock position, okay? And then you'll know you're absolutely correct. All right, now the second part to this is you want to go ahead and put your, your cam pin back in here. So as you can see, we've got these, these holes lined up, all right? The holes are lined up, so we want to take our cam pin and just stick it right back in that hole right there. Now, you see that it's vertical, okay? The cam pin is vertical, okay? We want to turn it. 90 degrees so that now it's horizontal and we can pull the, the bolt back and now the bolt is now locked okay we can't take it out of there all right so just remember when you're putting it back in 90 degrees pull the bolt back and it's, the the cam pin should be horizontal to you all right just remember that now we want to take our firing pin 
and just kind of drop it back down in there. All right? And make sure you get it down in there fully. You want to make sure that it's all the way down in there. So that's in there. Now we want to take our firing pin retainer and just stick it in this little hole right here. If it doesn't go all the way through the first time, you might have to wiggle it through, but it should go through the first time just like that. All right? All right, now we have our uh, bolt carrier group assembled. All right, now what you want to do is put your charging handle back into your upper receiver, okay? Now, a thing to remember when you're putting this all back together is inside here, I don't know if y'all can see it, it's two little grooves, like right, right here. It's, it's two little grooves right in the, in the beginning, one on each side, okay? And they fit. The charging handles little flaps right here. See these little flaps right here? So what you want to do is you want to slide that in there and place those flaps into those grooves and drop it down just like that. See that? Drop it down just like that. Now you want to slide it forward, but don't slide it forward all the way just yet, okay? And this is important. This is why you want to have your bolt all the way to the back when you're putting it back in here. Place your uh, your gas key, turn it upside down, and place your gas key in the little uh, groove well right here of the charging handle. Just like that. So when you get it in there, just slide in like that. Make sure everything's even. Now what you can do is press it all forward. Now, if our bolt was forward instead of pulled all the way back, we couldn't get that in there. So just remember to pull your bolt back. But we have everything assembled now. Now we're going to put our upper onto our lower, and then we'll be finished. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our upper back onto our lower, and everything fits in perfectly, okay? Now we want to push our rear takedown pin in and our forward pivot pin in, and now we're all assembled once again, all right? All right, now the last thing that we want to do is give it a good old function test, okay? Now, the way you do that is you want to have the weapon on safe, of course, all right? And you want to take your charging handle and just kind of rack it back a few times, just like that. That right there gets all of that, that uh, lube and everything working back and forth and gets everything coated, okay? And it just ensures that everything is still working properly after disassembling everything. So you take your charging handle, okay? Work it back and forth, then lock it back, okay? Make sure that works. Push your charging handle back in, all right? All right, now we want to put our bolt back down. Make sure it, that works, all right? Our bolt is back down. Now we want to make sure that it fires, okay? So we'll pull our trigger. We'll rack it back one more time. Check the trigger reset. Should hear that like that. And we can repeat the process if we want to, all right? So... Now we have done our function test. So I hope this video was able to help someone that's uh, new to the AR-15 platform. I know the AR-15 can be a little bit intimidating just by looking at it, but it's pretty simple. So once again, this is your boy JB with JB's Barbecue and Guns. Saying y'all be easy. Peace.